Okay, this is another video for my A-level electronic students. I'm going to look at some code that's written for the PIC16F88. And specifically, I want to have a look at this C block directive, uh, figure out what that does. And I want to have a look at some code around about here as well, which is going to be storing some numbers in the general purpose registers. So let's have a look at the data sheet first. This is the data sheet for the PIC 16F87-88. Never used an 87, but we do use the 88. And you'll see that there are um, four banks of memory. So they're bank 0, 1, 2, and 3. And you'll see that we've got these general purpose registers. These are the sorts of places that we can store temporary values, uh, numbers, uh, to um, help our program function, you know, like x equals whatever you might have in a in your say Python program. Well, where are you going to store that value? Well, we can store it in the general purpose register. So you'll notice, as I say, that we've got um, four banks, and you'll see that we've got a general purpose register there of 96 bytes. We've got some more there. We've got some more there, and we've got some more there. So where you're going to store your values, well, it's up to you. You don't have to use bank zero. You don't have to use bank one. It's up to you. But if you are not fully aware of where you're saving, then you can uh, come into some significant problems. Let me contrast that with a microcontroller that we used to use in A-level electronics, which had only two banks, bank zero and bank one. And there was one block of general purpose registers which were mapped, or in other words, mirrored into bank one. So it didn't matter which of the two banks you were in. If you changed a value in one register in, say, bank zero, bank one was all automatically updated. So, you know, wherever you went made no difference. And if you changed it in bank one, it was updated in bank zero. But we don't have that uh, luxury or maybe that problem uh, nowadays because these general purpose registers are entirely separate. So. Uh, you do need to know which bank you're in before you start changing any values in the general purpose registers. Oh, let's just quickly go back there. You'll notice that bank zero, which is the one which I'm going to use, um, the general purpose registers start at hexadecimal to zero. So going up uh, further, now we've got the C block directive. By the way, the C block directive is not actually part of the machine code. Ultimately, it's going to be compiled, um, assembled into machine code, not, not part of the executed uh, code itself. Uh, so it doesn't need to go inside a code block. Notice we've got a code block starting there. Um, we've got a code block. Where is that? Um, I'll find it in a moment. There we go. Another code block starting there as well. So, you know, every time you see code, but this doesn't need to be in a code block because it's not actually code, not code that's going to be executed anyway. So this C block directive says that starting at the number, the hexadecimal number two zero, let's set up some constants. So D1 will be assigned the number two zero, D2 will be given uh, 2, 1, D3 will be given 2, 2. So you can see it's a step of 1 each time. You could actually change that if you wanted, but there would be no reason uh, to have a step of other than 1. Um, yeah, okay, so 2, 0, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3. So temp would be hexadecimal number 2, 3. Okay, um, so C block always ends with an NC. And now... Um, so if ever we were going to, say, refer to D1 later on in our code, like there, um, the, uh, the assembler actually is going to replace that D1 with a literal number of 2,0. Okay. So uh, looking at our code, you'll see that these first two lines are going to uh, clear both RP0 and RP1 bit of the status file register. Well, the reason we do that is because we want to select bank zero. To select bank zero, I need to clear both of those bits. So um, go back, um, RP0 and RP1 will be zero. 
and if you wanted to select bank one they would be zero and one bank two would be one and zero and bank three would be one and one in other words uh, you're counting in binary so zero 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 one one zero and one one and because I want to be in bank zero I need to clear RP zero and RP one of the status file register so having done that I'm now in bank zero that's why I did that comment there don't worry about what this code does uh, exactly um, but here we've got a MOV LW so move a literal number a literal value of hexadecimal three into the working file register and then a MOV WF so move the contents of the working file register into the file of D1 so in this context D1 although D1 literally means 20 it's going to be interpreted as the memory address at 20 let's put a breakpoint in here and I'm also going to now go window target memory views and I want to have a look at the contents of memory so I'm going to look at the file registers I'm going to drag that over here you can resize this this panel doesn't need to be so big and so now I've already selected the simulator so simulator is already selected not the either of the pickets that I've got so simulator is selected and I'm going to just debug so this is going to run the simulation and you'll see that we're at the current breakpoint now and so we've already moved a literal value into the working file register if you want to see that actually let's go target memory views so the working file register is a special function register so the working register has the literal value of three loaded up yep okay so that's fine and then we're going to copy that zero three into the uh, file of d1 which was two zero which is that address there okay that one there so let's just um, press f7 to skip over that line so that executed the line and interestingly you, you'll say oh yeah it didn't actually update to zero well it did unfortunately this panel does not get updated automatically we need to change it to something else so now hopefully you'll see that address two zero has been updated to zero three which also has a decimal equivalent of three so the next thing is going to be move a literal value into the working file register so let's do that f7 just to skip over that line and then so now 18 remember hexadecimal 18 so that's going to be what 24 um, in decimal so we're going to move, um, copy I said move but actually it's copy really uh, copy that value into the file register of d2 now remember uh, d2 is going to be well if that was 20 then that would be 21 so this next line is going to copy it into that register there so let's uh, execute that line by just pressing f7 so it skips over that line and um, once again it's not actually updated i find that a bit annoying really uh, but you'll notice when i change the view again so now uh, at address 21 so we read it like that that's 21 you'll see that we've now got the uh, 18 loaded and if you wanted to you can go symbol like that and you'll see that the two 24 uh, decimal 24 uh, hexadecimal 18 has been loaded into that memory address so that's all working as expected now let's just have a quick look at the date sheet so yeah it's uh, confirmed that we have been uh, loading up the those values into this area of the general purpose register and not say the addresses uh, around about here or wherever else okay so that's rather important so um, just to summarize um, the C block is a directive that doesn't need to be placed in a code block uh, C block has a step increment of one so you can just give it a starting number and then it will increment each one sequentially 
uh, what else? Um, yeah, when you do anything with general purpose registers, do select the bank first. Now, uh, often you can probably get away with it because you possibly are in the right bank, but it's much, much better if you actually select, explicitly select the correct bank. I've used, in this case, I've used um, BCF uh, to select the banks and I'm modifying the RP0 and RP1 bits of states register, but there may be other times when uh, the bank cell directive may be uh, more easily read, re easily understood. Okay, so I'm not necessarily advocating to do it this way all the time. Um, if you want to view this, this is just a summary, remember, so if you want to view this, remember you can get to that by window, target memory views, uh, file registers, also uh, the special function registers is quite nice to see as well. Okay, and uh, that's it for the video.